Welcome to the House of Hypertrophy. 2022 is nearly over, and I thought it would be a nice idea to overview some great muscle and strength papers published this year. Let's waste no time and dive in. In the last few years, the research has provided great insight into how training muscles at stretched positions is great for hypertrophy. 2022 is no different. With further papers comparing range of motions, different exercises, and exploring stretching in between sets. Let's overview them. A Brazilian study published very recently demonstrates how a partial range of motion at stretched lengths could be superior for muscle hypertrophy. These researchers had untrained women train their calves with this exercise for three sets of 15 to 20 reps to failure, three times per week for eight weeks. One group trained with a full range of motion, another group with a partial range of motion with the calves at a stretched position, and a third group with a partial range of motion with the calves at a shortened position. Medial and lateral gastrocnemius growth tended to be superior for the partial range of motion at stretched positions versus the two other conditions. There was a previous study last year that comparably found with leg extensions, using a partial range of motion at stretched positions was overall superior for quad hypertrophy to a full range of motion or a partial range of motion at shortened positions. So partials at stretched positions may be superior for hypertrophy. However, it's worth considering these two studies were done on untrained women, and that two studies itself isn't an abundance of evidence, so I'm looking forward to further future research on stretched partials. But I do think a person could experiment with stretched partials if they wish, and see if they notice any enhanced gains. Another Japanese paper this year compared triceps hypertrophy between overhead extensions and pushdowns. Due to the long triceps head anatomy, this muscle would be stretched with overhead extensions, and the researchers found long head triceps growth was greater with overhead extensions. Fascinatingly, the overhead extensions also grew the combined medial and lateral heads more. In theory, these muscles wouldn't be stretched any more with overhead extensions versus pushdowns, so it's not mechanistically clear why this occurred. In any event, this Japanese study was overall really awesome. Moving forward, does stretching in between sets help build more muscle? A recent review study out of the USA examined the literature. They initially detail an array of potential ways by which stretch could signal muscle growth. We've actually detailed how stretch forces signals hypertrophy in a previous in-depth video. However, they also note how static stretching in humans doesn't seem to be great for hypertrophy, although extreme static stretching could be. For example, this 2022 German study found that performing this calf stretch for one hour daily produced significant gastrocnemius growth. When stretching between sets, as the researchers note, ideally you'd want to get into the stretch immediately after the lowering phase of an exercise, and loaded stretching could be ideally used here. This is because during the lowering phase, Elements in your muscle that produce stretching forces are in a stiffer state, something that could be beneficial for signaling muscle growth more. So getting into the stretch straight after the lowering phase would theoretically leverage these stiffer stretching forces to signal more hypertrophy. Indeed, a study by Silva and colleagues found getting straight into a calf stretch for 30 seconds between calf press sets produced significantly greater gastrocnemius growth. However, this paper wasn't actually ever published it was only presented at some conference. But another very recent study also found that getting straight into a calf stretch for 20 seconds between calf presses produced greater soleus growth, but it did not produce greater gastrocnemius growth. With studies that do not have subjects get into a stretch straight after the lowering phase of an exercise, they largely fail to find stretching between sets to be better, but it does not seem to compromise growth either. A USA study found in between bench press sets Moving over to cable fly machines to stretch the chest produced similar gains to just resting passively between sets. A Japanese paper found that in between flywheel squats, moving over to a table to stretch the quadriceps produced similar gains to just resting passively. Having said this, another USA study did actually find that in between sets of a range of exercises, moving to a 30 second stretch did enhance hypertrophy in previously untrained individuals. As the researchers of this year's review describe, in summary, emerging evidence suggests that interset stretch may enhance muscular adaptations. Its effectiveness appears to be predicated on performing the stretch immediately after the final repetition of a set, which conceivably takes advantage of the residual effects of previous eccentric actions. I want to add my own limitations here. There's still far from a ton of research on stretching between sets. Moreover, 
The paper that found calf stretching enhanced soleus growth only indicates slightly more soleus growth, not a ton. In any case, you could experiment with stretching between sets if you wish. I'm looking forward to more data in this area. As you progress across your training career, the amount of hypertrophy and strength you experience drops off. However, emerging data indicates training breaks could reset your responsiveness to training. There's a protein called P70S6K involved in a signaling pathway that promotes muscle hypertrophy. A great study from Germany this year found seven consecutive training sessions were enough to significantly reduce the activation of P70S6K after training. In other words, it was less responsive. However, a 10-day training break was able to restore P70S6K's responsiveness to training. In other words, training breaks might reset the responsivity of your anabolic pathways. And perhaps this results in more muscle hypertrophy long term. The research on training breaks is very much in its infancy. And I have a video detailing some other research on training breaks. At the very least, I'd use this data to show individuals absolutely should not be worried whatsoever about training breaks. The debate about how much muscle growth contributes to strength is always ongoing, and a recent study examined correlations between bench press 1 rep max strength and a range of measurements. Various measures of muscle hypertrophy did strongly correlate with bench press 1 rep max strength. The subjects of this study bench pressed an average 91 kilograms. But even in more elite powerlifters, lean mass strongly correlates with bench press, squat, and deadlift strength. In fact, a study last year found muscle hypertrophy measurements were the best predictors of bench press strength in powerlifters, more so than elbow or shoulder flexion strength and technical factors. Now, these studies are all correlations, but I'd argue these findings make sense. One main way hypertrophy occurs is by increasing the number of force generating units it has in parallel. This directly increases the force that muscle can produce and presumably benefits strength. If you've made it here, I have a free ebook you might like, The Ultimate Guide to Bench Pressing for Strength and Hypertrophy with more than 100 scientific references. From technique to training variables to comparisons and other fascinating science, we cover it all. Grab it through the link in the description or comments.